J.D. Vance is not weird. He's like pretty much as normal as they get. According to the left, what makes you weird is believing that it is actually of moral benefit to the United States for people to have children. Weird, weird, weird. Everything about, again, Vance is weird. Does Vance actually have a problem? If you're going to accuse someone of having sex with a couch, you better have video. He has a new insult out this week that her and her husband have been using towards you, calling yeah. you weird. Does that hurt your feelings? How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, no, not at all. It doesn't hurt my feelings. So there's currently a PSYOP campaign underway by the weirdest people in America to convince all of us that J.D. Vance isn't actually weird, contrary to popular belief and what we can see with our own eyes. But I mean, of course, the weirdest people in America are going to say that he's not weird because they're going to vouch for him because if everybody thinks that J.D. Vance is weird, then of course, they're going to also think that Ben Shapiro, Megyn Kelly, and others like Matt Walsh and Vivek Ramaswamy are weird as well. But I, for one, reject this gaslighting campaign because every normal person can see that J.D. Vance is indeed very weird. Now, what's funny about this whole weird thing is that it's clearly getting under his skin. And even though he's trying to play it cool, you could tell it's hurting his feelings. So he hit back at Kamala on Twitter with a no you and by sharing this clip of Kamala Harris supposedly being weird herself. Now, here's the clip in question. And my pronouns right. are she, her, and hers. She, her, and hers. Mine too. All right. Kamala is finished. Got her. <laughs> That's giving me drill vibes, specifically the tweet where he says, and another thing, I'm not mad. Please don't put in the newspaper that I got mad. That's J.D. Vance right now in a nutshell. Because... She told the crowd her pronouns in that clip because she was speaking at a town hall specifically about LGBTQ plus issues. So the setting was appropriate for her to disclose her pronouns and she was communicating to trans and non-binary people that she respects their pronouns and was sharing hers so they're not the only ones sharing theirs in case people ask. So even if you don't get it, it doesn't come across as weird. But what does come across as weird is shit like this. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? Th th this is not people are focusing so much on the sarcasm and not on the substance of what I actually said. And the substance of what I said, Megan, I'm sorry, it's true. Let's say Roe versus Wade is overruled. Ohio, Ohio bans abortion, um, you know, in 2022, or 2000, let's say 2024. And then, you know, every day, George Soros sends a 747 to Columbus mm -hmm. That's to right. load up yeah. disproportionately black women to get them to go have abortions in California. And of course, the left will celebrate this as a victory yes. for diversity. Uh, that's kind of creepy, health just right? health justice. These are only exterminate that's, that's working right. yeah. class black yeah. people. It, yeah. it, something yeah, it, really. Exactly. Yeah. Something like that could. I mean, that would be a the really equity. weird turn of events that could happen. Yeah. Yes. And, and it's like if that happens, do you need some federal response to prevent it from happening? Because it's really creepy. So according to him, it's creepy to help women travel across state lines to get health care that they need. But it's not creepy to create a federal task force to literally track down women who cross state lines to get abortions and then punish them for it. That's weird. He wants to control what people can and can't do with their own fucking bodies. And he's hyper focused on fertility and the fertility of women and arguing that women without children have less self-worth. And I'm sorry, that right there, that's turning off normal people. That's why this attack about him being weird it resonates with so many people because he's just fucking weird. Even Dave Portnoy of Barstool Sports, who's a Republican, was outraged in response to an old video of J.D. Vance recommending a tax increase on childless people, and he called it idiotic, rightfully so. And on top of that, here's what Republican Tommy Lorenz said about his childless cat lady comment. 
don't get too comfortable on the Trump side, and I'm sure we're going to talk about this later, but the attacks on her personally, on whatever her past personally may have been, or calling her a childless lady, none of those are going to work, and they're going to make women second-guess their support for what they may have felt for Donald Trump. Bad move. Ooh, there are a lot of strong points in that for Republicans. Mm -hmm. I mean, depending on how much you love Donald Trump, and do or don't like his VP pick, some of that was for J.D. Vance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's for, it's for Don't everyone. call women dumb. It just doesn't work on Republican women or liberal women. Listen, I never thought that I'd say this, but Tommy Loren is absolutely correct. What he says, his childless cat lady comment, among other comments he's made, his hyperfixation on what people choose to do or not do with their own bodies, that is a turnoff not just to women, but men as well. Not just a turnoff to Democrats, but Republicans as well. Most normal people don't understand why anyone else would be obsessed with what other people choose to do with their own lives. And that's why the weird attack goes so hard, because it's instinctively true, but also substantive. And it's caught on so quickly that both Fox News and MSNBC have put together compilations of people calling J.D. Vance weird. And spoiler alert, there's been a lot of fucking people calling him weird because a lot of people can see the dude's really weird. You know there's something wrong with people when they talk about freedom, freedom to be in your bedroom, freedom to be in your exam room, freedom to tell your kids what they can read. That stuff is weird. They come across weird. They seem obsessed with this. We're using this fake living room to talk to you about a super weird idea from J.D. Vance. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's quite weird. But what was weird was him joking about racism today and, and, and then talking about Diet Mountain Dew. Who, who drinks Diet Mountain Dew? And on the other side, they're just weird. I mean, they really are. Some of what he and his running mate are saying, well, it's just plain weird. <laughs> it's not just a, 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 a weird style that he brings. It's that this leads to weird policies. That That is weird behavior. More extreme, more weird, more erratic. I mean, on the other side, they're just weird. The, the 32 ounces of weird. Donald Trump and his weirdo running mate. And by the way, they are weird. It is bizarre. It's, it's weird. It is weird. J.D. Vance, just dumb Vance, is pretty weird. I think Kamala Harris is going to pick anyone uh, as weird and creepy uh, as J.D. Vance. Uh. It demonstrates and shows us exactly what he believes in by selecting a J.D. Vance, who is um, quite, um, <laughs> you know, as the campaign said, weird. Yeah, I mean, it just kind of stuck because... He's really fucking weird. And part of the reason why this attack is so genius is because it's non-falsifiable and there's really no proper way to respond to it. At best, you can just say, I'm not weird, you're weird, which is kind of what they're doing. But if you try to say he's not weird and explain why he's not weird, you're just reminding people that a lot of other people think that he's weird, which you wouldn't have to do if they didn't think he was weird in the first place. So there's really no way to win in this situation. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. I think the best thing to do is to just ignore it, but they're not. They're Streisand affecting it, and even Vance himself is trying to know you Kamala Harris and say, actually, no, she's weird. But I mean, no, I'm sorry. That clip you can say of her, people might not get it. They would think that maybe she is out of touch per se if they don't understand why she would share her pronouns, but it doesn't scream weird. Whereas all the things that you've said about women's reproductive health and their fertility, that is really fucking weird. But we've also seen this response from Republicans and the weirdest people in the country to counter these claims that J.D. Vance and Republicans like him are weird. And they're saying, I'm not weird. Democrats are weird because they love drag queens and whatnot. That's what Matt Walsh said. But I mean, this is a guy who has videos of him talking about the fertility of young girls. That's not normal. So again, the weirdest people in the country are trying to say, actually, J.D. Vance is not weird. I vouch for him fellow weird person. But what's funny is that in response, you have people showing why everybody else thinks that they're weird. For example, this person showed a photograph of Marjorie Greene consoling someone who is pretending to be a January 6th insurrectionist. I mean, this is not normal behavior. When normal people see this, they think it's culty and they think it's weird. Then there's also MAGA rapper for Giotto Blow, who was recently featured at the RNC. And for some reason, there's a picture of him with a literal Trump sex doll, mouth open and all, ready to be fucked which is so disturbing and weird and it's just it's creepy normal people don't have sex dolls of politicians that they support right so it's a political cult and these people aren't just in a cult they want to control every aspect of our lives so they're just weird 
That's why this attack slaps so fucking hard. Now, I don't really know where this attack originated, but one of the first people that I heard use it was Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, who I hope Kamala chooses as her running mate. And I want to show you what he said about Trump and J.D. Vance. And I think that the way that he says it, this right here is the perfect, you know, uh, compliment to this whole weird attack on J.D. Vance and Trump. So let's listen. These guys are just weird. That's who they are. So it, ain't, it isn't much else. Don't give them the power. Look, are they a threat to democracy? Yes. Are they going to take our rights away? Yes. Are they going to put people's lives in danger? Yes. Are they going to endanger the planet by not dealing with climate change? Yes. They're going to do all that. But don't lift these guys up like they're sometimes the heroes. Everybody in this room knows, I know it as a teacher, a bully has no self-confidence. A bully has no strength. They have nothing. The fascists depend on fear. The fascists depend on us going back. But we're not afraid of weird people. We... We're a little bit creeped out, but we're not afraid. That right there is why I think this line of attack has caught on. Republicans are bullies. J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, they are bullies, right? And we all know bullies lack self-confidence. They're usually bullying somebody else because they feel bad about themselves. I mean, look at how Donald Trump is obsessed with his own image. This is an old man who's still smearing orange on his face every single day. And I get that the whole orange mad bad thing, like that's an old trope, but it's still really weird. The fact that he unevenly applies tanner to his face that's weird. It looks goofy. Not to mention all the clips of him talking about how he was attracted to his daughter, Ivanka. That is not normal behavior, right? And the most hilarious thing that proves the efficacy of this attack is that somebody claimed J.D. Vance fucked a couch in Hillbilly Elegy. It's not true, but people believed it because it just seems like something that he would do. Why? Because these people are fucking weird. Christian nationalist authoritarian types always try to dictate how other people live their lives because they themselves usually have some sort of skeleton in their closet. I mean, how many anti-abortion Republicans have been caught paying for the abortions of their mistresses? How many anti-gay Republicans have been caught gargling cock behind closed doors? I mean, this fixation on other people's behavior is usually a clue that they're projecting in some way. Every accusation is a confession, right? And it's about time that somebody pointed out the obvious. These people are fucking weird and we're tired of these weirdos trying to dictate our lives. Now, what makes all of this even more funny to me is how Republicans are trying to respond. Here's one of my favorite examples. I think of another thing that's weird. A party that claims to be the defenders of democracy launching a coup organized by a handful of party elites to oust their own leader. Yeah, and another thing weird, announcing radical changes to our Supreme Court because you've been on a losing streak. Expecting Americans to want to join our military when you say things like this about the country. Racism is real in America, and it has always been. Xenophobia is real in America, and always has been. Sexism, too. Watch. And let's not forget one of the weirdest things of all, spending hundreds of millions of dollars to redefine and reimagine a Democrat nominee whose radical policies appeal only to the far left. Nuh-uh, J.D. Vance isn't weird. Here's Kamala saying something I disagree with. Isn't that so weird? Isn't what she's saying weird when she says that racism has always existed? How weird. Hey, dumbass, it's not inherently weird if you disagree with what somebody is saying. Again, what makes J.D. Vance weird in particular is his obsession with reproductive choices that other people make. It's not just the fixation, but it's also the policy implications behind his obsession with other people's lives. That's not something that normal working class people care about. It's a weird niche thing that Christian nationalist fascists like him obsess about. So the weird attack is very clearly getting under their skin. And for the first time, Democrats are all united in saying the same exact thing, which is encouraging because we've all seen how Republicans can twist reality and make people think that things that aren't true are true, like open borders or that Biden is a communist, by just saying it over and over and over again. You know, repetition can turn something that's not true into a widely believed thing. So if Democrats do the same thing with this attack, that's actually true, by the way, then they can for once actually take control of the narrative and not let Republicans monopolize political discourse. And it's nice to see so much energy and hunger from Kamala Harris's team. You know, that's something that 
I wouldn't have expected because I've just kind of become accustomed to Democrats, you know, taking the high road or doing the whole when they go low, we go high approach, which has been a demonstrable failure. I mean, they're freaks. And it's time we stop playing nice with these fucking weirdos, okay? When you're up against fascists, you have to fight fire with fire. So I'm relieved to see Harris's team understands that, and I'm glad to see Democrats, for once, show some signs of life and attack these goons for what they're doing, for what they fight for, for what they believe in. We don't want to live in their Christian theocracy, and it's time that we call this what this is. Their movement is weird, and they need to know that we think they're weird. Normal people think that they're weird. Not only can you take a load, you can take the ultimate load, and even better than that, that you find your true calling and destiny in your willingness to take the ultimate load. load, load. Have it your way, buddy. buddy.